That's right, in today's video we're going to take a look at the new CNC from Voron Design, the Cascade. But before we get started, huge shout out to LDO Motors for sponsoring this year's Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest coverage. For printer parts, kits, accessories, and more, check them out in the link in the description. So it's always a good day when a new Voron is announced, and today we have something a little bit different, because this isn't a 3D printer from Voron, it's a CNC machine from Voron. And it's called the Cascade, and Doug here is going to tell you some more. Hey Nero, this is the Voron Cascade. This has been a project I've been working on for the last two years. We brought it here to RMRF to show it to people, see what they think, in anticipation of a release later this fall in 2024. It's a desktop CNC that follows much of the Voron ethos where most of the parts are commercial off the shelf and designed to be as capable as we can within as compact of a size as possible. So what do we got here? So this is a, what style of CNC is this? So this is a, this is a Cartesian motion system where you have a separate X, Y, and Z, which is separate, of course, from the typical Voron Core X, Y. On every axis, you've got dual MGN 15 rails, 12 millimeter ball screws, and NEMA 23 motors, giving you lots and lots of torque and rigidity. And like most Vorons, it's designed to be enclosed from the start, is that correct? Correct, it is designed to be enclosed from the start. These are polycarbonate panels because there are spinning things happening inside and we would like to contain them. There we go. So now we can get a better look at the internals of the machine. So let's start with the spindle. What are we working with this here? This is a 110 volt, 1.5 kilowatt, 24,000 RPM spindle. Uh, typical tooling we're using in here is either one eighth inch diameter or one quarter inch diameter. A lot of the test cutting has been done with a one eighth inch single flute carbide end mill. Okay. And that is attached. So we have all ball screws here for all the motion. Correct. All ball screws and those are all belt driven ball screws so that we're able to keep the motors as compact as possible. Okay. And then what kind of rails? These are all MGN 15 rails. Uh, we're using MGN 15 H for X and Y, MGN 15C for the Z in order to make sure we keep as much space. And again, we gotta be, we're trying to stay compact. Yes, this is a very compact package. So the bed moves here. The bed I... moves up and down in Y. You've got this entire carriage moves back and forth with X and then drives up and down okay. with Z. And this looks like this is an off the shelf uh, bed here, right? This, this, is a... this bed was produced by Saunders Machine Works. They're in Ohio in the USA. This bed will be a production commercial item that you can buy straight from them. They will awesome. carry that in their store. Okay, and what kind of electronics are you running here? So right now, the electronics in here are basically 3D printer electronics. And this is my prototype box. There's still have a little bit of work to do here. This was running a, a Big Tree Tech SKR3 controller with uh, Big Tree Tech external 5160 drivers running the Gerbil HAL firmware and talking to a Raspberry Pi as a G-code sender and manager management interface. Awesome, now we were talking about this earlier though. This is kind of designed that however you build it or however you want to build it, you can put whatever kind of controller or electronics in. Correct. Uh, I actually am gonna be doing some testing with Linux CNC later this month. And I've been talking with the folks at Duet to potentially see how well RipRap firmware will work with this platform. Awesome, so it, it, it's pretty capable and it's, a nice compact package here. So now traditional Vorons, you're using completely commercial off the shelf parts, nothing custom. We have machine components here. So what's there, going on here? There are eight, exactly eight number of custom machined aluminum parts in here. We did try, I did try testing this with extrusion based components and we were unable to make them either fit well or have be rigid enough for what we're trying to accomplish. Now the parts are all custom machined, yes, but they can all be machined right on Cascade. So we are still following the RepRap philosophy of being self-replicating. -rep okay. And a lot of them too, you can kind of pretty much almost do by hand, like some yes. of the side plates, right? Um, now, some of the these side plates and other things, they all can be done. This is actually the most complicated part that's in here. This is the X carriage. Um, but ultimately, it's just a bunch of holes and counter bores, and there's four threaded holes. 
Okay, so if you had a good drill press and you were good at laying it out, you could do this by hand. Yes, yes. I believe, I mean, it takes a lot of patience, but it is possible. Okay, so you, you could theoretically do it by hand, bootstrap some parts out of plastic and print. Correct. Print parts and replace them with machine parts once the machine yes, is Yes, you could do that. Um, you definitely would have some significant rigidity impacts, but it is certainly possible. Okay, awesome. Now, yeah, because with CNC, it's a whole other beast than 3D printing. There's all kinds of forces involved. You try to keep within the original design goal as possible, but sometimes you, you just need a metal part. Correct, you just need a metal just for that level of rigidity. I imagine, I, I'm waiting to see if someone prints this out of like 100% infill polycarbonate and see what happens. Yep, that might be a thing, uh, but you won't, threading gets a little hard. Now there are panels, like for example, there are certain panels here, this side panel here, it is black, it looks a little bit plastic. These are aluminum panels on the sides and in the back. That's to help with rigidity and to keep as much torsion as we can in this, in this. again, rigidity being what we want. Awesome, and then what do we have on the side here? This is an option that I kind of put together. This is an air or mist system. It takes shop air in the back through a regulator. There's a solenoid that controls it and is able to basically deliver compressed air or mist to the cutting area. When we're cutting aluminum, the air blast really helps with getting chips out of the way to avoid chip recutting, which impacts your performance of your, of your cutting action. So what is Cascade capable of cutting? Cascade is 100% capable of every type of aluminum, uh, brass, and, even, and any of the softer materials. Uh, we have found that there may be, it may actually be able to cut some steel, but we have to do a little bit of testing to verify. And you found that out by accident when you machined your own vice. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Delrin here. Yes. Okay, and then we do have some examples here of some stuff machined on out of aluminum. Yep, that's one item. And this one was, that one was done on a previous setup. This is one that was just done last week using the new spindle. There's a lot of machine marks, but if you feel it, it's actually relatively smooth. That is cool. And what is the, uh, the volume, the work volume again? This is 275 in X, 220 in Y, 90 in Z. In Imperial, it's about 10 and a half by eight and a half by three and a half. Okay. So like most four-on releases, this will come out with a manual, a bill of material, everything we're aiming for end of year. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, the goal, yes, it will come with all of that, all the files, all the manuals. The goal is late fall. So October, November timeframe is the goal Definitely, for sure, by the end of the year, it's going to be a big push to do that. Okay, and any kits that are in the works, or is it going to be have something you're going to have to self-source for now? Uh, we're we're just getting into discussions with with folks about what's possible with kits. Uh, the the 3D print, uh, sorry, the the aluminum machine components will for sure be available. I've already talked to Fabrico, um, and we're already going to make sure that some of those machine components are available. As, and we're, I'm gonna try really hard to get somebody to make frame and panel kits, because those are typically, right now, those are about a third of the bomb cost yes. in so, frame and panels. So what are we looking at for bomb costs right now? Uh, I'm put, uh, the estimate I have right now is about $2,500 to $3,000. Uh, all in, but that includes all the enclosure and everything you saw. Yeah, and with CNC's are like, the spindle is always gonna cost the price of a spindle, NEMA 23s, custom beds, like, it's a CNC. Certain things are just going to cost a certain price Correct. and you can't really get around Correct. it. Correct. But uh, right now, aluminum costs are pretty high and the processing costs for doing the frame and panels is really high. So anything we can do to cut the cost down in these other areas, we want to try to accomplish. And hopefully if kits do come out in the future due to just bulk discount prices when you're doing runs of kits instead of self-sourcing, we may see lower prices in the future. Yes, I really, I would love to see this be in the $2,000 range. I would absolutely love to see it to be down around 2K. I don't think, I don't think anywhere near 1,000 or 1,500 is possible just with what's in it. Awesome. And that is We're on Cascade with Doug. Thank you. So, thank you.